While practicing prior to cutting out the trunnions proper, it became clear that the cut was pretty rough with the uh, quarter inch bandsaw blade at least. Now there's many possible causes but undoubtedly this blade runs slow. So I decided to take out the three inch motor pulley that I'd started with and replace it with a four inch motor pulley and speed the bandsaw blade up from about 1500 feet per minute to about 2000 feet per minute. It can't do any harm. By far the worst part of this whole build has been securing the motor. I was in two minds as to whether to show you this is so embarrassing. Those uh, nearer holes are when the three inch pulley was on the motor and I thought I'd made a big mess of those. So I decided when I put the bigger pulley on and had to have another set of holes, I would do a better job. So I was more careful and it ended up even worse. So I'm abandoning this way of securing the motor. I've uh, found a way of turning the capacitor box through 90 degrees, this thing here, this huge lump that's got two massive capacitors in it. I found a way of turning that through 90 degrees so that it no longer fouls the front of the shelf just here. And I'm going to fit some sliders and runners and clips made out of wood to secure the feet down on the pedestal of the motor from the top rather than with bolts from underneath. There are four reasonably well isolated feet on the base of the motor for mounting. And I've put onto the motor shelf of the bandsaw frame two L channels here at the back and then I'm going to drop this spacer block in in a moment. And the idea is that I slide the motor into those L channels far enough back that I can get the belt on and then I pull the motor back to its resting position then I drop the spacer in at the back which pushes the motor to the correct distance for tension and then I use these L in the other sense so that they'll grab the foot from two directions and I pop that in there. And tighten it down with a very long reach screwdriver. I'm just remaking the carriage block of the lower blade guide. This original one, that thread is going with the grain and doesn't hold at all well. In fact, it's absolutely dreadful. Uh, doing a quick experiment across the grain, threading into this hardwood, uh, it's quite a bit more successful. So I've made this with the grain in the other direction, which will also help these screws here hold. I could take this opportunity to replace the ceramic thrust surface uh, with a bearing. Uh, this is a little noisy, but I've done what Matthias recommends. The lower thrust is slightly away from the blade, and it's only when you push the workpiece onto the blade that it starts to touch this so you don't hear the noise. But I think I'm going to continue with the ceramic just to see how it goes. Uh, later on, it's not much of an effort to make these blocks. Maybe I'll change over to a bearing. I'm also taking the opportunity just to shift the blade line by a millimetre. The uh, original blocks didn't quite have the same amount of adjustment as each other. I could also take this opportunity to change the upper blade guide carriage block because it too has the bolt that holds the bearing going alongside in the same direction as the grain. But it doesn't seem to be suffering as much as this one did, so I shan't replace that just yet. Well, that's a great deal better. Even without this clamping down, that's pretty securely held. And when you clamp the carriage block 
to the trunnion support bar that's very solid and the guide blocks are now symmetric either side of the blade. I foresaw two main difficulties in cutting out the trunnions and the trunnion cradles. The first my novice status at cutting out curves and the second the five dowels that the plans called for. I suspected uh, that would strain my ability to line up dowel holes in opposing pieces past its limit. One of Matthias's suggestions was to cut the pieces of the sandwich, this 18mm, uh, then the 6mm in the middle, then the other 18mm, out slightly oversized, glue them all up and then trim them to the template all in one go. I felt, however, that that uh, would run the risk of me ruining three pieces if I got it wrong, rather than just ruining one piece. So I decided to cut one 18mm outside piece as accurately as I could, cut the other two pieces out slightly oversized, glue it all up and then use the flush trim router bit to trim the oversized two pieces to the accurate piece. As for attaching, I decided I'd use two dowels and three screws. I'd clamp the first accurately cut 18mm piece to the trunnion support beam and I would drill right the way through that piece into the beam for the first two dowels and then they'd become blind holes when the other two pieces were glued up and trimmed. And after gluing up and trimming, I would then drill through for the three final securing screws. So here goes the pilot hole. I've just realised I look as though I'm dreadfully ill with my black hands here. It's just that I've been painting up the uh, star knobs. One important point is that the table proper, represented here by that bit of MDF sitting on top of the sub-table, is assumed to be 18 millimetres thick by the plans and the radii of the trunnion cradle and the trunnions is set such that it's at that 18 millimetres above the sub-table point that the trunnions cause the top table to pivot. Well here, hopefully for the last time, the temporary table is fitted with a fence in order for me to cut the curve line into the table proper. <laughs> Once again, I forgot to lower the guide and I'm making the top table initially in MDF. I just want to see how things work out before I perhaps commit some more expensive material to the table. Whilst I had the top wheel off, I took the opportunity to do a little bit more balancing and uh, it always passed the pound test and now at least whilst it's running, it also passes the 2p coin test. 
And with the top table in place, mounted on its trunnions, the last functional piece that remains to be fitted is the insert plate.